Howdy friends, Bevan Cohen here and welcome back to part two of our two part video series, how to make all natural herb based insect repellent right at home. Now, it's been about two to four weeks since we've seen each other in the last video when we made our herbal tincture. So herbal tincture is about ready to go now. We've been shaking it up every day, keeping it nice and stirred to get a good potent extract right there. It's ready to go. So we've got our tincture. There's a few other things that we're going to need to gather. We are going to need a uh, funnel of some sort with a strainer. I got a real handy one right here. This is actually a, a funnel from a brew supply, a beer brewing supply company. Um, they're absolutely perfect because they've got these nice fine mesh screens that go right inside there. They clip right in there. Perfect for straining out our tincture. Pops out, easy to wash, right? Really, really handy piece of equipment right there. And we're going to need another jar to collect our strained tincture in. So we're going to strain out our tincture. And then we have a few other ingredients that we're going to include in our bug repellent spray uh, just to make it a little bit more potent. Of course, our recipe here is going to be two parts herbal tincture to one part distilled water and then one part witch hazel astringent. We're actually going to use a little bit of this witch hazel right here. Now, this is witch hazel that we make at Small House Farm. Uh, Hamamelis virginiana specifically is the herb that we use. Uh, this is made from the bark and the leaves of the plant. Um, and if you're interested in making it your own at home, it's quite simple to do, and it's wonderful stuff. But if not, that's okay. If you need to purchase your witch hazel up at the pharmacy, um, you can certainly do that. You'll see that the homemade witch hazel has a little bit of color to it. It's got this orangish red color. This is from the tannins in the bark, which is what makes it astringent to begin with. Um, and the stuff that you're gonna purchase at the store is actually clear, um, and it's based on isopropyl alcohol. Um, I prefer the homemade stuff, but that's just me. You do whatever's gonna be best for you, of course. So we're gonna have our witch hazel, one part witch hazel, again, two parts tincture, to one part distilled water. But that being said, if we're going to use distilled water, um, maybe we could just go one step further than that and make an herbal infusion, right? If you want to make, uh, if you want to make your bug spray using distilled water, that's perfectly fine. But if we're utilizing water, that in and of itself is a solvent, right? And we can use that and make a strong herbal tea and use that in our bug repellent to make our bug repellent even better than it already is, right? So the two herbs that we're going to use for our herbal infusion today are catnip and peppermint. And you may remember talking about these herbs in our first video, but let's just talk about them a little bit more right quick before we get going. I got some here in front of me. They're fresh. Um, I got some freshly harvested mint and a little bit of catnip right there. Both of these plants, of course, are in the mint family. They have square stems. That's how we know. Mm. And they both are very, very pungent, strong, strong aromas. Now, the mint has menthol and menthone. These are the chemicals that we're the most interested in as far as the bug repelling uh, nature of the plant goes. And then we've got our catnip. Um, and the essential oils in catnip actually repel insects from 13 different families, right? So we're talking flies and fleas and ticks and mosquitoes and spiders and, and, and chiggers, all the stuff you don't want. None of them like catnip. And that's one of the reasons I love catnip so much. So we're gonna make ourselves a nice, strong herbal tea with these herbs right here, and we're gonna use that in our bug spray as well. So before we go any further, let me get my herbal tea brewing. I'm gonna need a reasonable tea ball of some sort. I got this big guy right here. You're gonna want one that's pretty good size, right? Because we're gonna to wanna to make um, a nice strong tea and we're working with fresh herbs. Remember, when you're working with fresh herbs in any situation, teas, tinctures, oils, whatever it might be, you always wanna use two to three times more plant material than you would if you're using dried herbs, right? Because dried herbs, dehydrated, the water's been removed, concentrating those volatile oils. This fresh plant material has a lot of water in it. Therefore, we need to use a lot more plant material to get just as strong of a brew, but that's okay. I got a big old tea ball right here so we can get going. Let's make some tea. If you don't have a tea ball at home that's big enough for that sort of job, don't worry. You can just take the herbs, put them right into a container like this, and then add the hot water to it. No big deal. Our final product is going to be about an eight ounce container. Um, so one part herbal infusion would be about two ounces of tea. So I don't need to make a lot of tea to fill up this bottle. So I think that this tea ball that I got right here is going to be just fine. All right, now that our water is hot, let's go ahead and get our herbal infusion started right away so it can steep while we work on the rest of the product. Now, in my tea ball here, I have got a, a half a cup 
total herb. Uh, one quarter cup fresh peppermint, one quarter cup fresh catnip. 50-50, one part of each, into the tea ball. And then we're just going to add just enough water to cover it up. We're going to set this to the side. Oh, I can smell it already. It smells really nice. Nice for me, not for the uh, insects, right? All right, we're going to set that aside to steep. And while that seeps, we're going to go ahead and uh, filter out our tincture. Now, I'd already showed you my handy dandy funnel here. If you've got something like that at home, that's great. Um, if not, it's okay too. You can use a uh, small stainless steel uh, calendar style thing to strain things out. Cheesecloth works pretty well. You can use a coffee filter, I suppose, um, but that's a very, very slow process. So getting uh, something like this is gonna be the best route. So we're gonna our, uh, another container here and we'll put our filter funnel and we're gonna go ahead and strain out the tincture. Um, now, if you are using all of this, you can strain this all the way out, most certainly, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you then squeeze all this plant material, right? Whether it would be in your hands, like if you're using a cheesecloth, you can just wring it right out. Something like this, you could even use a potato masher, a spatula, whatever it might be. But you're going to want to squeeze all of that plant material to get all that good tincture out of there. You don't want to waste any of it. But for what we're doing today, just because we're only just using a small amount of it, I'm just going to really filter out just what we need um, to demonstrate the, the bug repellent. So let's go ahead and get that going. Look at this color right here. See? Now, just like with the water infusion, as soon as I hit it with that hot water and I can smell smell the aromas right these are signals that the plant's extracting its chemicals into our menstruum into our solvent in this case hot water over here it's our alcohol look at this coloration this is how we know that we've got all the good stuff from the plants are right here in our herbal tincture and there we go set this over here now i've got two parts herbal tincture one part distilled water or in this case herbal infusion and then we're going to do one part witch hazel again we're using our homemade witch hazel that's why it's got this color um, if you were to purchase it it would be clear but anyways these are the three main components of our all-natural herb-based insect repellent so the next step of course is going to be combining these three ingredients so let me get one more container and we can combine our ingredients to make our bug spray we're gonna combine all three of our components here into the center jar where I've already pre-measured my uh, herbal infusion. Remember now, this is my catnip peppermint infusion right here. To cover the recipe one more time, it's gonna be two parts tincture, one part herbal infusion to one part witch hazel. And in this particular case, one part equals a half a cup. So right here, I've got a half a cup of herbal infusion. And to that, I'm going to add a half a cup of witch hazel. and then two parts of our herbal tincture. Now that's gonna be uh, a full cup, is what we're working with here. Now, we could say that we're good to go with this right here, most certainly. This is gonna be a wonderful, strong, strong insect repellent. Most certainly, but we can take our insect repellent that we've made with herbs right from our own gardens and we can make it even more potent with some additional options, um, some other things that we could consider adding to it. Uh, some things could be apple cider vinegar. We could talk about vanilla extract. I like to add a little bit of vanilla extract to it. What's interesting about vanilla extract, and we're surely all familiar with this uh, because we use it in a lot of our baked goods and that sort of thing, but all vanilla extract is really is just a tincture. It's uh, vanilla beans extracted in alcohol, right? So this is very similar to what we did in the first video, uh, but this one uses vanilla beans. I like to add this to my insect repellent. Um, I find it to be quite effective. If we're gonna add any vanilla extract or um, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice is another a great option. We're gonna go with about one to two teaspoons is all that we're gonna need to add. For a volume of this um, size, about two teaspoons would be just the right amount of vanilla extract or uh, apple cider vinegar again. 
Some people do like to use essential oils in their products and that's perfectly fine. Uh, but as you can see, we've crafted one with whole herbs, herbs right from our gardens. And that's what I prefer. But if you like to use essential oils, that's totally great. Um, and there's a number of essential oils out there that are fantastic um, for use in an insect repellent. Some of the most well-known of course being citronella and lemon eucalyptus, right? Um, now, this is something that's measured by the drop, even though we need quite a few drops here. Uh, I'd say maybe 10 to 20 drops of essential oil into our product. But what's important to note is that if you're using essential oils in your insect repellent, you're gonna need to use some sort of a dispersant, right? Otherwise, the essential oils are just gonna sit at the very top of the product. Um, and they're not gonna be well blended throughout the insect spray. Um, and they're not gonna be as effective as you would like them to be. But Easy enough, a dispersant, it could be something as simple as alcohol, right? Adding a little bit of alcohol to the mix is gonna help blend those essential oils throughout the product. And since we're already using an herbal tincture, we've already got some alcohol in the product, which will act as a dispersant if we choose to use those essential oils. But I tell you what, I think this stuff is so good, we don't even need to add anything to it. But of course, if you want to, these are all great options. And that information, of course, is in the downloadable uh, list of equipment that you can uh, use that comes with the video. Well, we've got this guy right here. All we got to do now, bottle it up and make it ready to go. So what kind of bottles do we want to use? Again, that's going to be up to you, whatever you have available, whatever you have access to, but there are a few options. Um, now here's a couple very inexpensive bottle choices that come from the dollar store. I like these guys. Um, Typically with a lot of small house products, we use glass bottles, uh, but glass is not something that I'm gonna wanna use for an insect repellent, because this guy's going on the road with me, right? It's gonna be in my backpack when I'm hiking, it's coming out with me camping, whatever it might be, and glass is a little bit too fragile. So these aluminum bottles are really nice for that. Um, you know, they're, they're dent resistant, you're not gonna break them. Uh, they're pretty much safe, they're not gonna shatter. Uh, these, are, these are really nice. But the thing that we need to consider when we're looking at these bottles is more so the type of spray mechanism that we're gonna use. Now this one you're familiar with, there's a lot of household cleansers are going to have one of these guys on them. And these are all right. Um, I find them to be a little large, a little bulky. I can't quite throw this in my backpack. And I find, especially with the inexpensive ones, they don't hold up very well, right? You get a few squeezes out of them and then, you know, a piece might come loose and they're going to break. I think I broke this one right here in the middle of this demonstration. Um, so sometimes you get what you pay for, right? Uh, the biggest issue though is the size of this thing. It's just not portable. I can't throw this in my bag or anything like that or in my back pocket and it's awfully top heavy right this thing just tips right over so you get what you pay for sometimes i prefer these they're a little more sleek they're a little more slender look at this guy right here same type of bottle similar package but it's this spray top that i love so much right i love these guys just a little spring loaded mechanism uh, they're pretty sturdy they hold up i've used some of these i mean multiple years using the same spray bottle and they keep up just fine so take a look at your local grocery store, um, your dollar stores, your local co-ops are a great resource for packaging like this. Look into those things, support your local businesses whenever you can. If you are unable to find one locally, there's a lot of online resources. I'll put a few um, websites in the, uh, the downloadable printouts just to get you ahead, you know, get you a good start on those. Um, but whenever you can, support local, of course. Try to buy from your local suppliers. All right, we're gonna choose our bottle here. I am not choosing one of these guys. We're gonna go with this one right here. Now this is an eight ounce bottle. Eight ounce bottle right here. So if we were gonna go back to thinking about our parts and our measurements, right? In an eight ounce bottle, that would be four ounces, half, half the product is that tincture that we made in the first video. And the other half is gonna be one quarter distilled water or herbal infusion and one quarter witch hazel. That's what we've got going on here. I've got it all nicely blended up right here and we just gotta pour it into this container. So let me get a funnel. All right, so let me screw my cap on and then we gotta give it the test run. We gotta make sure my nozzle's gonna work. So let's give it a spritz. Gotta get it pumped up. Oh, there it goes. Hmm, that's some good stuff. So I can cover my body with this wonderful insect pump, and I can go hike in the woods, I can go to the park, I can go down the river, I can go anywhere I want, and I will be insect free with my all natural, handmade, herbal based insect repellent made with herbs that we grew right in our own gardens. And you can do it right at home too. All right, folks, that's all the time that we have today. Get out there and get growing. Thanks so much. <laughs>